What's going on, guys? What we're looking at here is the movement of the North Magnetic Pole. And this is the movement of the South Magnetic Pole. You can see it race across the continent of Antarctica and leave the continent. Same with the North Pole. It wandered around northern Canada and then, boom, 1900, that thing took off across the top of the planet on its way towards Siberia. So you can see again the journey of the South Magnetic Pole as it leaves the continent of Antarctica on its way toward Australia and Indonesia. So why am I showing you this over and over? And why do I think it's important for you to actually be able to see the movement of the magnetic poles and to be able to visualize where they were and where they are today? So that when you see articles like what you're about to see here, you'll understand what they mean. Erratic motion of North Magnetic Pole forces experts to update the model of aids in navigation. What is that model? Here it is here. It's the World Magnetic Model is the standard model used by the U.S. Department of Defense, the U.K. Ministry of Defense, and NATO for navigational purposes. They're having to update this model one year early. The reason for that is because of this. If you look to the far left, you'll see where the North Magnetic Pole was in 1900 and look toward the middle where 2020 is. That's where they predict it to be in 2020. But if you look at 2000 to 2010, that's a much larger gap than from 2010 to 2020. So they have underestimated. And for that purpose, they have to update the model. And if you read right in the middle, it says the aim of the world magnetic model is to be globally accurate within one degree of declination. But we were going to exceed that limit in only three years. That's why for the first time, they're issuing an update to the World Magnetic Model before the usual five-year mark in 2020. Earth's magnetic North Pole has begun moving so fast they have to issue an emergency update. So let's see what the North Pole's been up to. So this is Earth, and it's round, as you can see here. Now I know that's going to make a lot of flat Earth people angry, but I don't care. <laughs> so if we look at Earth. We zoom in here a little bit. Of course, this is northern Canada, and you can see where the North Pole was. Let's see if I can pull up. We'll add, well, let's get rid of that. Oh, I'll get rid of that. Hold on. So, about the North Pole had wandered around in this area for thousands of years. And then in 1900, as it got to about this point here, it started heading this way. And you can see, now the geo, let's see, geological North Pole is about right here. That's basically the top of the earth. If you picture a basketball. If you if you were spinning a basketball on your finger, the point where your finger meets the ball would be the South Pole, the geological South Pole or geographic South Pole. The opposite of that on the top of the ball is the geographic North Pole. That would be this spot right here. But the magnetic North Pole had wandered well, you know, we can't even call it wonder. Wondering is when it was wandering around in this area for th thousands of years. But again, in 1900, 
it started going this direction. Again, remember now, the geographical North Pole is over here. It doesn't move. It's top of the Earth. But the magnetic North Pole has been racing off in this direction. So, this is about where they predicted it to be in 2020. But they're off by that. Hmm, that's interesting. 1776. Wonder if anyone knows what happened that year. I'm going to let you think about that while you contemplate Earth being flat also. <laughs> but anyway, um, so you can see the North Magnetic Pole has traveled about 2,000 miles since 1900. And it's been speeding up each decade. So if we were to take, let's, let's go another 2,000 miles from that. We'll put a point there which is about where it is now. And then we go another 2,000 miles. So that put us at 4,000. That's going to put it right here in almost China. So I turn the Earth around for you here so that we can, so that I'm not confusing you. You know, most people should be able to look at this and tell that we're looking at Russia at the top, China in the middle, India toward the middle, toward the bottom. Of course, Saudi Arabia and Africa over there to the left. Europe to the top left. South Asia to the bottom right. And Indonesia. So, if we go back up to where the North Magnetic Pole is today, we'll put that about right here. Again, you know, you can see it wandered from here, traveled across the top of the planet, it's right around here now, which is the reason that they're flipping out and needing to update the world magnetic model. But another 2,000 miles will put that in this area. So let's take a look at the South Pole now. You can see here, this is Antarctica, and of course this is Australia. And the South Magnetic Pole had been in this area for thousands of years. Today it is right about here. It is in the ocean and it has steadily been moving this direction. So as it continues to head up this way and the north magnetic field continues to head down, they look like they're going to meet somewhere right around here. So what does that mean? If the Earth's poles are going to meet right about here in this area, does that mean that the north is going to become south and the south is going to become north? Or does that mean that this becomes the south pole and the north pole moves to the exact opposite side of the planet? Well, I have something very interesting to show you on the exact opposite side of the planet from this point right here. So the Earth is about 25,000 miles around. Half that distance would be 12,500. So if we mark this point here being where the Earth's poles, which if you look real quick, we'll see that the North Pole is about 5,000 miles from that middle meeting spot. And the South Pole is also about 5,000 miles from this spot that looks like where they'll meet. So let's go half the distance of the Earth. Of course, again, the Earth is 25,000 miles. If we go, whoa, <laughs> if we go 12,500 or about, about that, that will put us right around this area. So check this out. Oops. Let's let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. And zoom in to this spot. What do we find but a place called Polo Norte? Polo Norte. <laughs> okay, well, here's what Polo Norte means. If you see here, English translation of Polo Norte. Look to the left. 
North Pole. That is the English translation of Polo Norte. And we can even come down here. Well, we don't need to do all that. <laughs> but So let's go back to that. Why, in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, is there a town called North Pole? Of course, it says Polo Norte, but that is Portuguese for North Pole. So, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Let's take a look at civilization. We can zoom into this little town here, and we can see what civilization looks like. We see roads, you know, we can zoom in a little farther. You can see patches of land that have been cleared out so that homes can be built. But if we go on up from there a little bit, we'll just follow this up. You can see where the deforestation has stopped. Once we go a little farther up, there's doesn't look like there's a single tree that has been cut down. And now i got to find it again. There we go. Yep, I was almost there. So this Polo Norte, or North Pole, sits in the Amazon rainforest in the middle of nowhere. It's 12,000, basically about 12,500 miles away from South Asia, where it looks like the North and South Poles are going to meet. And there's nothing in this place. If we zoom in further, there's not a town here. There's no roads. There's only this river. <laughs> so, like I said, I don't. I see no deforestation. I think if you zoom in far enough, yeah, supposedly there's some little restaurant. But when you click that, there's nothing there. Except for a little map. Well, it was... Uh, so there's nothing there. Why is this spot called Polo Norte? I just find it very interesting that in the middle of the Amazon rainforest on the other side of the planet from where the poles are moving toward each other, if they come into it, which is about 5,000 miles away from each other, you know, the North Pole, the North Magnetic Pole is about 5,000 miles away from South Asia, and the South Pole is about 5,000 miles away from South Asia. And then we go half the distance of the Earth to the exact opposite side, and we find Polo Norte. I just think that that is very interesting. So another thing that I recommend that you do is go to this website, antipodesmap.com. You can see that at the top. If you go to this website, you can pinpoint any place on Earth, and this website will show you where the exact opposite side of the planet is. So what I've done is I put in Polo Norte, Brazil, and I have no idea why they use this icon here in the middle. It looks like a man bent over. Uh, I don't know, that's very strange, but you can see if we zoom in, this is where we were just looking at on Google Earth, this little town called North Pole in Brazil. So if we go down a little bit, it'll show us the exact opposite side of the planet, and there it is. You can see right where we were talking about, somewhere around South Vietnam, Indonesia, Sumatra. And again, this is the middle point. The North Magnetic Pole and the South Magnetic Pole are both about 5,000 miles away from this spot. And then on the very opposite side of the planet from this spot is Polo Norte. So again, just check out this website. I think it would be very useful uh, in your research. And finally, guys, I can't leave this website out. It's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, Historical Magnetic Declination Map. And I encourage everyone to go to this so you can see for yourself 
where the poles have been, where they are today. These, these lines here, the blue lines are the negative and the red lines are the positive. And where they're close together is where the magnetic field is strongest. And if you look at this hole in the middle, uh, which is right in the middle of the South Atlantic, that's called the South Atlantic Anomaly. And I encourage you to go check that out. I'm going to talk about this in future videos. But the first thing you want to do to get rid of those lines, click the box on the left, that top left box. And if you take off that little check mark, that'll get rid of those lines. And then go down to the third box, and you want to click that. So we'll go ahead and click that little box. Then that will show us this. So, of course, this is the movement of the magnetic north pole from about 1500 until now. And you can see, whoop, there it goes, <laughs> right over the top of the planet, heading toward the other side, heading toward Siberia. And if we come down to the south, it'll show you the same thing for the south pole. You can see where the south pole, the blue, is where it was around 1500s. And that green dot is where it is today. And in fact, I believe it's actually a little farther than that. So I just really want to show everybody that. I can't leave this website out. I encourage you to go check it out. But I also got to give a big shout out to a few channels. I encourage you to check out Oppenheimer Ranch Project. They have a lot of good information on the magnetic pole flip, especially this 12,500 year extinction level event that seems to be found in geological records. Um, but so check out Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Check out Suspicious Observers. They have some really great information about the magnetic field. Um, and I have to give a shout out to Florida Marquis for some of the information about that place in Brazil called North Pole. So check those guys out and uh, I'll see you in future videos. Oh,